Hello my dear friends, I welcome you all to our channel Best Notes Tutorials. I have been preparing MCQs till now and uh, I have taken up another video to make and uh, it is about Edgar Allan Poe but at the same time I request you all to go through all those MCQs because if you don't revise then entire work will be piled up and eventually when examination will approach then you will have a tough time therefore make a routine of completing one one mcqs every day okay it, it will be a revision after reading it will be a revision okay and uh, right now we are doing a screening uh, videos as well okay for uttarakhand lecturer so if you wish to join you are welcome our channel is there please subscribe it and uh, be a part of screening assessment today i have taken edgar allan poe who is an american writer and uh, today in this video we are going to discuss about this important writer and his important works as well okay so i have chosen out here 10 extremely important topics which are extremely important from the examination point of view so let's begin with the video today the content of our video are the raven the tell tale heart the fall of house of usher the murders in the rue morgue the black cat the mask of the red death annabel lee the cask of amon tilado the pit and the pendulum last one will be the gold bug so let's start the video edgar allan poe was born on january 19th 1809 he died on october 7th 1849 his fiction includes multiple journals which consists of horror fiction adventure science fiction and detective fiction Edgar Allan Poe started his literary career in 1827 with the release of 50 copies of Tamerlane and other poems. Friends, from this slide, the important points are date of birth of Edgar Allan Poe and his date of death as well. Apart from that, in which journal he has expertise this is also going to be important from examination point of view and the first work of edgar allan poe which is tamerlane and other poems okay please keep all these things in mind let's move ahead which was credited only to a bostonian a collection of early poems that received virtually no attention. The publishing industry at the time was difficult career. Much of Poe's work was written using themes specifically catered for mass market tastes. So here we get to see that before writing his first um, book, okay, he had written a Bostonian as well, but it was not given any attention therefore that earlier work is regarded as his first work okay and here it was very difficult time uh, when he used to write so here the theme he had to change okay to mass market tests it means he had written about almost every journal okay so that he can attract the readers Poe pursued originality in his works and disliked proverbs. He often included elements of popular pseudosciences such as phenology. There is slight spelling mistake friends. Please rectify that. It's phenology. P-H-E-N-O-L-O-G-Y. Phenology and physiognomy. Okay. Phenology means 
the study of cyclic and the seasonal natural phenomenon especially in relation to climate and plants and animal life okay and physiognomy is uh, the general appearance shape and uh, features of a person's face i hope uh, these two terms are clear friends his most recurring themes deal with questions of death okay please note it down poe was a master practitioner of gothic fiction and in the, our video also we are going to include the work the work which we have included in this video maximum will talk about gothic activities okay gothic means uh, something related to horror okay horrifying things we are going to discuss through his writings all right so keep in mind he talks about death number 1 and number 2 his gothic fiction okay gothic genre is expertise of albert uh, sorry edgar allan poe let's see the publication dates of these work and uh, let me tell you the topics when you read it out okay you will find there is something um unusual okay the, the topics are very unique see the raven the tell tale heart the fall of the house of ursa the murder in the morgue okay in the room morgue the black cat it also talks about death and superstition then mask of the red death annabel lee the cask of amontillado lado okay amontillado this is spelling mistake the pit and the pendulum the gold bug all these works okay it has unique title okay and uh, most of it talks about death as we have already discussed okay in earlier sl slide death is the theme of edgar allan poe's writings keep in mind so let's see the publication date of these works Ra the raven was published in 1845 then the tell tale heart is published in 1843 was published in 1843 the fall of the house of ursa was published in 1839 the murders in the rue morgue in 1841 the black cat in the year 1843 then the mask of the red death in the year 1842 annabel lee in the year 1849 the cask of amontillado in the year 1846 the pit of the pendulum in the year 1842 then the gold bug in the year 1843 this received many awards to edgar allan poe now we will discuss entire details about the poetry the raven okay the raven let's see the publication date and other information about this work the poem was first published in january 1845 the poem is famous for its musicality styled language the supernatural atmosphere then the raven was first published in new york evening mirror on january 29th 1845 so okay let me complete the last point then i will discuss important details its publication proved to be lucky as he became popular in his lifetime so here you have to remember raven's publication year was 1845 the poem is famous for these three things but out of these three this is going to be very important okay supernatural atmosphere and this is the quality which we find in other poetries as well of edgar allan poe uh, and this is this work the raven was published first in the new york evening mirror please keep in mind the new york the new york evening mirror and it was published in the year january 29 1845 okay and this proved to be very lucky work because after that he became extremely famous in entire world and till now we are remembering uh, we remember we read okay children are also 
advise to read this poetry because these can be related to the human life as well. Let's continue. The Raven is a narrative poem by Edgar, American writer Edgar Allan Poe. It tells of a talking raven. Okay, here personification we get to see, personification literary device. Raven's mysterious visit to a distraught lover, tracing the man's slow fall into madness. Distraught lover. Okay, in uh, when lover was not able to meet uh, his partner, then he became so much sad, anxious, very much worried, okay, which gradually turned into madness. Okay, the lover often identified as a student in lamenting the loss of his love, linear, uh, sitting on a bust of palace. Here, the lover is, you know, shown as a student. And he is lamenting at the loss of love. Especially, you have to mark love. Okay. The raven seems to further distress the protagonist with its constant repetition of the word nevermore. In the story, in the sorry, in the poetry we find this word frequently. Okay. Nevermore. And this aggravates. Okay. This hikes the pain of the lover. Okay. So, I guess this much is clear. We will move ahead now. From this slide, you might be getting the question that who is refer in the poetry? You have to write student who is regarded as lover. Okay. The theme. The theme of the poetry. Okay. The main theme in the Raven poetry are the human thirst for self-torture and confronting grief and death. Here, human thirst for self-torture. See, because, oh, sorry, when they are not able to fulfill their desire and the things does not go according to their plans, human beings' plans, what happens? They want to torture themselves. Okay, and... Uh, Whatever pain is caused during this process, it becomes very less than the pain. Physi physical pain becomes less torturous than the emotional pain. Okay. The inner pain. So, that is being revealed here. And confronting, being face to face with grief and death. Okay. Grief and death. Grief, pain. Alright. Sadness because of any reason. And death. As we have already told that death is the theme of the maximum work of Edgar Allan Poe's work. So, here also the same thing has been seen. Okay, death is the, death is referred uh, here, which human being confronts, faces at one point of their life. Let's see the character details of Raven. Character details of Raven. Here, Rav, what is Raven? Let me tell you. It is a kind of a kind of shiny crow. Okay, shine shiny crow. All right, crow. Everybody has seen, isn't it, in our locality on the roof of our building? Okay, so we are talking about this Raven. Okay, a crow with shiny feather. Okay. The main characters in the Raven are the speaker, the Raven and Lenore. The speaker is a man mourning the loss of his lover. His sadness and desperation leads him to torture himself with questions he know will cause him pain. Here we find three characters especially Raven, the speaker and Lenore. Okay, who all are they? Let's find out. First of all, Raven, of course, he is a crow. It's a crow. And the speaker, okay, is a lover who is mourning the loss of the lover. He is sad and uh, he is in desperation. And he is torturing himself because of this pain. Character of unnamed narrator. Who is he? Let's see. 
The narrator seems completely filled with love for his dead woman. It's almost a little too much. He calls her sainted, rare and radiant. In a sense, this Lenore is not anything like a real person. She is an ideal, a symbol of what the narrator thinks a perfect, unspoiled, untouchable woman ought to be. Here, when we read, you know, we imagine that some girl, okay, with a beautiful figure, okay, but clearly it is not mentioned in the poetry. Okay, here, Lenore, okay, the lovers, the lovers, okay, who is mourning, his partner is just a symbol, okay, and a symbol of what? Symbol of perfection, okay, symbol of idealness, symbol of an ideal thing, okay, you can say a thing of beauty, a thing of beauty which cannot be destroyed. Okay, even if some human being dies, okay, but not their soul, isn't it? So, it is something which is perfect, alright, that the lover has lost. Let's begin with the summary. The unnamed narrator is alone in his house on a cold December evening, trying to read. As he is about to fall asleep, he hears a quiet knock at his door, but decides to ignore it. He says that he has been reading in the hope, hopes of relieving his sorrow over Lenore, his beloved, who has passed away. Though he tries to convince himself that nothing is there, his curiosity and fear overwhelmed him. Friends, here we find the narrator who is alone in his house. Okay, and uh, he is he is about to fall asleep. Okay, but he hears some noise. All right, he thinks that it is so. Here it is cold December month. This must be asked in your uh, examination that which month was it when the poetry opens? Okay, so it was December month, cold month. All right, when the narrator was heard the knock on the door okay he decided to ignore but he thought that who is there he became so curious and what happens let's find out he eventually opens his door speaking linear into the darkness this randomly calling linear shows that how much he was waiting for his lover Okay, when he hears tapping at his window, he opens that too. Suddenly, he opens the window also because he heard somebody tapping on it. At first, whoever was it tapped on the door and then on the window. And a raven flies inside the room, landing on a burst of palace. Here, the narrator jokingly asks the raven's name and it's surprising to hear it respond nevermore. Okay, here maybe the person who, somebody, okay, who knocked on the door and who knocked against the door and knocked against the window was none other than raven. So suddenly raven enters inside his room, okay, and uh, he <clears throat> jokingly says that, what is your name? And Raven replied, so this is personified thing, okay? Personified poetry. Let's move ahead. The narrator then seats himself directly in front of the bird, trying to understand what it means by nevermore. This was something, okay, which does not have any meaning for the narrator okay therefore he started becoming curious what does it mean suddenly the narrator perceives that angels sent sorry angels sent by god have caused the air to become dense and perfumed anxious as 
anxious, he asks the raven if the angels are a sign that heavens will relieve him of its sorrows, to which bird says again, nevermore. Here, he asks one question, that angels are going to relieve the sorrow of him or not. Then, raven says, nevermore, again. With the same response, the bird rejects his hope that he might see Lenore again in heaven, as as well as his impassioned request, impassioned request for the bird to leave him alone. Finally, the narrator tells us that the raven has continued to sit atop his chamber door above the bust of palace and that he will live forever in its shadow. Here, it means that this is to signify that the bird is not ready to give fake hope to the narrator. Okay, but he says, he reveals that in shadow, his beloved is going to remain there. Okay, not physically. Okay, he is not going to meet his beloved one physically, but in shadow, she is going to remain forever. This was a signal from, from Raven to the narrator. Let's see the literary devices. Here we find metaphor. The first metaphor used in this poem is the 13th stanza. To the fowl, those fiery eyes now burned into my bosom score. And uh, here, personification is also implemented. Personification is a device that gives human attribute to non-living things or animals such as quoth the raven nevermore where the raven is given the ability to speak. So here comparison is made okay and here the raven okay the crow was given ability to speak. So this happened through literature I mean literary device. So it is these two are implemented. Next we see simile. The simile used in the poem is on the morrow he will leave me as my hopes have flown below, flown before. Here the poet compares his hopes to a bird flight. It is often misunderstood as the raven's flight. Here comparison is done between the hopes of the narrator and the flight of the bird. Then we find imagery. Uh, Edgar Allan Poe has a skillfully used imagery to create images of the feeling of pain, horror, grief while reading the poem. The following phrases like silken, the silken, sad, uncertain, rustling of the curtain are the best example of imagery. Okay, we are able to imagine those things related to these words. Okay, it creates picture in our mind. So, therefore, it is imagery here. Then, alliteration device. Alliteration is used to create musical, musical effects in a literary piece. It is the repetition of the same consonant sound in the same line such as S in from my books, Circe's the last sorrow, sorrow for the lost linear. Then W and N sound in once upon a midnight ready while I pondered weak and weary. So here we find W weak and weary. Okay being repeated then we have assonance assonance is the repetition of vowel sounds please keep in mind because students usually get confused between alliteration and assonance because alliteration is repetition of word okay but consonant word here assonance is repetition of vowel word okay a e i o u all right 
so occurring closely in the same line such as the word e in ready weak and very okay so here e sound has been repeated therefore it is a sonance and the sound o and e in dreaming dreams no more mortar even dead to dream before okay so here we find repetition of o and e sound therefore it is a sonance consonants it refers to the repetition of consonant sound that comes in quick occurrence in the same line such as p and d sound in i nodded nearly napping suddenly come a tapping and o sound in on this home by horror haunted tell me truly i implore by this we have completed the raven now we will move towards another story the tell tale heart is written by edgar allan poe it is a short story by american it is a short story by american writer edgar allan poe and it was first published in 1843 okay 1843 the story was first published in james russell's lovells the pioneer in january 1843 Okay, the collection of the poetries which was pub which was uh, published under the head of James Russell Lewis, even he was American writer. Okay, so here in this work, we find this the tale tale heart. Okay, you have to remember the date of publication, and you have to remember the writer, of course, and to which country he belong. Okay, let's move ahead. let's see the introduction of the work i have already told you the tale tale heart is a short story by edgar allan poe and it was published in 1843 it is related by an un sorry unnamed narrator who endeavors to convince the readers of the narrator's sanity while simultaneously describing a murder the narrator committed okay The victim is described as an old man with a filmy vulture eye. Here, as I have told you, and I am repeating now, the main theme of the work of Edgar Allan Poe is death, murder, superstition, okay, and supernatural gothic elements. So the same thing we are going to find here as well. Okay, it talks about a murder. that the narrator committed who was he and why he had to do it let's find out the theme of the story is guilt okay the tale tale heart is conventionally read as a moralizing story about guilt and innocence it is related to moral values okay killing somebody is not morally upright okay we should be able to help everybody out if we are not doing that then we are morally degrading okay so here it is the matter of guilt if we are committing some crime and therefore it is about guilt and innocence uh, let's find out how it has been implemented in the story critics have sorry interpreted the sound of the beating heart as the narrator's guilty conscious conscious reminding him of the of his deed okay guilty conscience there is spelling error reminding him of his deed okay let's move ahead another character in the story is the old man like the narrator the old man is incompletely characterized intentionally so here intentionally it is half described the narrator mentions he has gold and that he has an unnatural and filmy blue eye like a vulture's but neither he nor po mentions the old man's name the old man is a passive character okay passive inactive secondary you can say let's begin with the summary 
an unnamed narrator opens this story by addressing the reader and claiming that he is nervous but not mad okay here okay let me complete second point also he says that he is going to tell a story in which he will defend his sanity yet confess to having killed an old man according to the narrator he has committed a murder but still he is innocent okay how this both the things are possible let's see at first the narrator okay he says addressing the readers okay we the person who are reading and claims that he is nervous but not mad he is nervous because of the deed that he committed he committed a crime by killing an old man okay let's move ahead okay one more thing i want to tell you that he wanted to prove that he was he was innocent even after killing somebody he was innocent it is not somebody actually it is old man okay so what was his compulsion let's find out his motivation was neither passion nor desire for money but rather a fear of the man's pale blue eyes again he insists that he is not crazy but his cool and measured actions though criminal are not those of a madman here he says that why he had to kill him it is because it is not because of anything else but because of his pale blue eyes okay pale blue eyes and he says that it is not crazy thing okay it is not crazy thing but he is his measured actions okay his calculated actions made him do so every night he went to the old man's apartment and secretly observed the man sleeping in the morning he would behave as if everything were normal after a week of his activity the narrator decides somewhat randomly that the time is right actually to kill the old man here what we need to say is that this was general abhorrence okay general abhorrence towards human being abhorrence means hatred okay towards another human being that person has not done any harm to uh, anyone okay any person but still there is disliking okay because of which you somebody feels like killing that person okay he felt so all right he wanted to kill that man because of weird reasons and those weird reasons he even don't know except those eyes the narrator remains still stalking the old man as he sits awake and frightened the narrator understands how frightened the old man is having also experienced the lonely terrors of the night soon the narrator hears a dull pounding that he interprets as the old man's terrified heartbeat here he was stalking okay and he was well aware with the intimidation fear of this old man okay it was wind decision and uh, the throbbing of the heart was clearly heard by the narrator worried that a neighbor might hear the loud thumping he attacks and kills the old man here he does not know the exact reason okay except his eyes blue uh, ready eyes all right he does not find any reason to kill this man therefore in order to avoid other people coming near to him he kills that man he gets his work done he then dismembers the body okay and hides the pieces below the floorboards in the bedroom here he chops the body okay into different parts and then he keeps all those pieces okay and under the floorboards under the floor okay and covered it and it was in the very much his bedroom he is careful not to leave even a drop of blood on the 
floor. He does the work very cautiously. Okay, he hides the um, body very cautiously so that none of the drops will be on the floor. Okay, and everything will be neat and clean. As he finishes his job, a clock strikes the hour of 4. It was 4 a.m. when entire work was complete. At the same time, the narrator hears a knock at the street door. The police have arrived, having been called by a neighbor who heard the old man shriek. The narrator is careful to be chatty and to appear normal. He leads the officer all over the house without acting suspiciously. Here, narrator's narrator heard somebody knocked on the door and uh, some neighbor informed the police about the cry about the cry of that old man for help most probably so narrator was able to deceive these police officers as well okay and uh, he was saved for now at the height of his bravo sorry bravado he even brings them into the old man's bedroom to sit down and talk at the scene of the crime. The policemen do not suspect a thing. The narrator is comfortable until he starts to hear a low thumping sound. He recognizes the low sound as the heart of the old man pounding away beneath the floorboards. Here, he, was, he did not want to look suspicious or act suspicious. Therefore, he called police everywhere and they inspected. But even though he was so much confident in showing entire rooms, his heart was thumping. And he heard the thumping of low heartbeat as well under the floorboards. We right now don't know whether the heartbeat was of the narrator or of the old man. Okay. Let's find out. He panics, believing that the policeman must also hear the sound and know his guilt. He becomes a bit fearful because now he was not able to hide anything. He thought that even policemen heard the heartbeats under the floorboards. Driven mad by the idea that they are mocking his agony with their pleasant chatter, he confesses to the crime and shrieks at the man to rip up the floorboards. Here, he was, he, he was becoming gr uh, gradually mad because the crime he has committed, he thought that today or tomorrow it is going to be revealed. And right now he was so nervous Okay, and even the light-hearted talkings became so much grave for him. Therefore, finally, out of fear, he accepted that the crime that he committed. Now here, we understand that why he considered himself as guilty and innocent. Guilty for killing and innocent for confessing his crime. I hope the story is clear to you all. Let's move ahead towards the literary devices. First is symbolism. Symbolism is a popular literary device. It describes when an author uses an object to stand for or represent something else. In the hell, sorry, in the tail, tail hut. There are two main symbols. The old man's eyes and the beating heart. Poe also incorporates a couple of similes which are comparisons using like as in the story. First we need to understand this. Okay, symbolism. Old man symbolizes the old generation. Okay, and the heartbeat. Heartbeat is continuation of the crime. We cannot hide crime okay, after committing it. That is the um, symbol we get to see here. 
Po also incorporates a couple of similes and uh, similes are found in different places like when the narrator enters the old man's room on a eighth night, he notes that it is black as pitch. Okay, so here as is simile. Let's move further. The telltale heart is told through the first person point of view, which means that the story is being told from the narrator's perspective. The first person point of view of the story is especially important because it allows readers to see into the mind of Poe's in sorry unreliable narrator. So here these are the literary devices that we see. Let's move towards another topic that is the fall of House of Usher. Let's begin. The Fall of the House of Usher is a short story by American writer Edgar Allan Poe, first published in 1839 in Burton's Gentleman's Magazine, then included in the collection Tales of the Grotesque and Aberesque in 1840. Here, the thing that you need to remember in mind is that of course, the writer's name, okay, to which country he belongs and uh, the publication date and in which magazine it was published, okay. It is Burton's Gentleman's Magazine and it included tales of the grotesque and arabesque in 1814, 1840, sorry, okay. So, these things from last line you need to remember. Introduction of the work. The short story a work of gothic fiction okay again see the topic gothic fiction includes themes of madness, family, isolation and metaphysical identities. Here as we have been discussing the theme of Edgar Allan Poe is gothic Super, supernatural okay it's about death so the same thing we are going to uh, see in this story as well the story begins with the unnamed narrator arriving at the house of his friend Roderick Usher having received a letter from him in a distant part of the country complaining of an illness and asking for his help so here friends the character is Roderick Usher and uh, he receives a letter, okay, he receives a letter from the narrator who, who resides in the distant part of the country complaining about illness and asking for the help to the people. As he arrives, the narrator notices a thin crack extending from the roof down the front of the house and into the adjacent lake so here you need to keep in mind what happened after the arrival of the narrator what does he notice okay so here you have to write a thin crack extending from the roof down the front of the house and into the adjacent lake okay this crack should be kept in mind because in net okay the question pattern has become very, has become very difficult so they are going to ask you mere things okay simple things but for that you need to go deep into the story okay let's talk about the theme of the story the fall of the house of usher the main theme in the story, the fall of the uh, house of Usher are madness, the supernatural and artistic purpose. Okay, artistic purpose. So, these three things are the theme of the story. How they are implemented, let's find out. Madness, the Usher family has a long history of incent and as a result, many contemporary Usher's including Roderick, suffer from insanity. Here, 
Usher is the main character and he is with family. Okay. He suffers from insanity. Right. Here the main character is Madeline Usher, Roderick's twin sister and victim of catalepsy and a mysterious incapacitating illness. Because the narrator is surprised to discover that Madeline is a twin, she signals the narrator's outsider relationship to the house of Usher. Here, the sister's name is Madeline, okay, who also plays important role here, and she is suffering from catalepsy. Another character is Roderick Usher. Roderick Usher, the owner of the mansion and last male in the Ursa Lane. Usher Lane. Usher Line, sorry. Roderick functions as a dupel ganger and character double for his twin sister Madeline. He represents the mind to her body and suffers from the mental counterpart of her physical illness. There is another character who is not named and his narrator. Roderick, Roderick's best boyhood friend contacted by Roderick during his emotional distress. The, na the narrator knows little about the house of Usher and is the first outsider to visit the mansion in many years. So here... Uh, the narrator was contacted by Roderick okay, during his emotional distress. When he was emotionally shattered at that time, the narrator was called. Okay, because he was friend. Okay, because he was friend since they were uh, childhood. Okay, later childhood you can say specifically. When they were moving towards adolescent period. Right. So, he was the one. Who is the outsider? Who is the first outsider to visit the mansion in many years? Okay, let's move ahead. Okay, before that, let me tell you a few things that you need to remember. Who was the narrator? Okay, to Roderick. Okay, you have to say he was boyhood friend. Next, you have to, you will be asked, why did he call the narrator? Okay, why did Roderick call the narrator? You have to write because he was emotionally distressed. Okay, and he was the first outsider. You might be asked that who was the first outsider in Usher Mansion. You have to write, it was the narrator. Okay. Let's begin with the summary now. The unna sorry, An unnamed narrator approaches the house of Usher on a dull, dark and soundless day. This house, the estate... Of his boyhood friend Roderick Usher is gloomy and mysterious. The narrator observes that the house seems to have observed, absorbed an evil and deceased atmosphere from the decaying trees and murky ponds around it. Here we need to keep in mind friends that unnamed narrator comes to Roderick's house but he observes something unusual okay because when a person lives in a house it will be lively okay it will be cleaned it will be bright okay it will be lively but here it was not so it was gloomy dark soundless as if there were no one in the room okay so here decay of the trees and murky ponds shows that evil and deceased atmosphere prevailed in that house okay He notes that although the house is decaying in places, individual stones are disintegrating. For example, the structure itself is fairly solid. There is only a small crack from the roof to the ground in the front of the building. 
He has come to the house because his friend Roderick sent him a letter earnestly requesting his company. As we have already told in the earlier slides that Roderick required emotional support. Okay, he was emotionally shattered, therefore this narrator was called. But when he entered, he found that the main house was um, intact. Okay, but the there was a crack. Okay, there was a crack from the roof to the ground. Okay, small crack from the roof to the ground. And uh, he had come out here because, of course, Roderick had asked him to come here for company. Roderick wrote that he was feeling physically and emotionally ill. So the narrator is rushing to his assistance. The narrator mentions that the Usher family, though an ancient clan, has never flourished. Here, Roderick asked this um, narrator to come to his place because he was physically and emotionally ill and he wanted his assistant. Assistant, sorry. The narrator mentions that the Usher family, okay, he, they never flourished because of some reason. That reason is not known. The only member of the Usher family has survived from generation to generation, thereby forming a direct line of descent without any outside branches. The Usher family has become so identified with its estate that the peasantry conf uh, confuses the inhabitants with their home. Here it says that in this family, Usa family, apart from these members, okay, Roderick and his sister, all right, without them, okay, there are, apart from them, there are no other outsiders. Okay, there is only one member okay there is only one member from the Asa family who had survived generation to generation there is no uh, association with outer world all right the narrator decides to read to Roderick in order to pass the night away here the narrator decided to read something for Roderick so that the night can be smoothly passed away he reads Mad Twist. Okay, this is the name of the book by Sir Lancelot Canning, a medieval romance. A romantic book he read for Roderick. As he reads, he hears noises that correspond to the description in the story. So whatever was read in the book, the same thing started happening around the around the narrator. At first, he ignores these noise, these sounds as the vagaries of his imagination. At first, he thinks that it is just his imagination, okay? The sound appearing real, it is just imagination. But soon, however, they become more distinct and he can no longer ignore them. Here, initially he ignored but not continuously because those sounds became so distinct. Okay, and he could not ignore them. He also notices that Roderick has slumped over in his chair and it's muttering to himself. Here, the narrator observed, okay, the narrator observed or um, noticed that Roderick was over the chair. Okay, he had a bit slipped and uh, he was muttering to himself. He was saying something to himself. The narrator approaches Roderick and listens to what he is saying. Here, he goes near to the to uh, Roderick, okay, another character, and he listens to what he says. He happened to reveal very astonishing fact. Okay, it might be the illusion of Roderick, but whether it was real or not, let's find out. Roderick reveals that he has been hearing these sounds for days. Even Roderick confirmed that the sound which the narrator was listening right now, he was listening to it many days ago, since many days, okay, and believes that they have buried Madeline, 
alive and that she is trying to escape he believed these sounds okay these weird sounds this gothic sounds buried his sister madeline alive therefore she is trying to escape and this is the sound of her sister okay he yells that she is standing behind the door the wind blows open the wind blows opens open the door and confirms roderick's fears madeline stands in white robes bloodied from her struggle she attacks roderick as the life drains from her and she and he dies of fear he the narrator flees the house as he escapes the entire house cracks along the breaks in the frame and crumbles to the ground here the narrator cries okay he yells that she is standing behind the door he says that he says to rodrick that your sister is standing behind the door and wind blows and opens the door and confirms rodrick's fear okay the fear was that mandarin was killed by those sounds and the same thing had happened okay mandarin was standing in white clothes which was bloodied it was full of blood stains and this was this signified that she struggled to come out uh, of the you know the place where she was buried and it happened because of that she attacked rodrick because now she is not a uh, human being okay she has become a ghost and uh, life drains out from her and he dies of fear rodrick dies of fear the narrator flees the house narrator was able to go away from house to save his life as he escapes as he goes out entire house crumbles and it becomes nothing by this we have completed this story also friends i hope this is clear to you all so keep in mind their characters are very less but they have significant role to play to uh, create a gothic uh, atmosphere to the readers okay friends let's uh, stop the video out here uh, right now we have done three stories in details so uh, we will keep the rest of the stories for our part 2 okay the uh, edgar allan poe uh, part 2 video all right so that uh, we can discuss other stories in details so till then i hope you all are going to stay with us we are going to revise and uh, you are going to succeed in your life thank you